Hello everybody, it's Larry and welcome to today's video and we're going to talk a little bit about Cinemorgans and as you know we have a Cinemorgans video in channel and it kind of explains that how every time you go back a generation it's like a tape measure and instead of getting bigger the numbers getting bigger as you're measuring one two three four inches it divides by two 3400 1700 and etc so this video is going to kind of explain that numbering system why it's uh, used like that how it, what it means and this is really important for the subsequent videos that tells uh, how to use that and what the, what that's really going to do. We're going to show you some really cool tips and techniques in the uh, next video or the video after that. But don't worry. Instead of taking a three-month gap between, they're going to be coming out pretty soon. So they're already made. They're just being polished at the time. So here we go. We're going to start with you. This is your family tree. Woo! You. <laughs> all right. We're all done. Hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> No, just kidding. So there you are. Uh, I've got pink and blue, and it's kind of you know gradient there. So I don't know if you're male or female. Doesn't matter. We all have the same tree. We all have you know a mother, and we all have a father. So here we go. We've got a mom represented over here, and father represented over there. So we all have two parents. Now you may have adoptive parents, step parents, you know stuff like that. But you biologically you have two parents. All right. And yes, it wasn't lost on me that the pink should have been on this side and gradient the other way towards blue. But rather than redo 100 slides, <laughs> we're running with this. There's actually another mistake in here, and I'm going to ask you to forgive me on that one because at some point, i got to quit polishing this and just get it out to you. So we have you and your mom and your dad. That's your tree. Now, your mom has two parents, a mom and a dad, and your dad has two parents, a mom and a dad. And each one of your grandparents has mom and dad. Okay? So there is your tree. This is kind of a visual representation of the tree. This is going up your uh, matrilineal and patrilineal side. And this is your mom's, uh, you know, patrilineal. And then, you know, your dad's, of course. So this is a tree. All right. Follow me with this as a tree. I think we're all still here. All right. So now the important concept you really need to have is that you are 6,800 centimorgans. Now, you don't see this anywhere. It's not written anywhere. It's not shown anywhere. You're like, well, wait a minute, Larry. <laughs> you're just making stuff up. Uh, well, you're 6,800 Cinemorgans because you are the combination of two parents, of which each are 3,400. And the math of this is going to be really, really important because you can use this math to really dive down to how these people are related to you. All right, so you're 6,800. You are the combination of your mother and your father. There are genetics combined, DNA combined, and that makes you. You are a unique individual to the two of them. All right? And even your brothers and sisters, while they may be related to your mom and dad, that mix is not going to be the same. You and your brothers or sisters, even if you're identical, twins, triplets, quads, whatever, you're not identical genetically billions and billions of genetic combinations, the ones that make up the uh, looks may be almost identical. So, so far as we see, you look and appear to be identical. But biologically inside, you can be much different, even with different ethnicities. Because those you know factors, those genetics that give you the looks that look identical are not the same underlying for the genetics. So even though you may be identical twins or identical triplets, that doesn't mean that you're actually going to have the same genetic ethnicities 100% the same. Now, typically they're pretty close because you know you shared, but when you divide the cell off, you got different pieces of the combination. So it is not identical, not 100%. Everybody is unique. All right, so you get 3,400 from your mom, 3,400 from your dad. That combines to make 6,800 for you. And the important thing to note is every one of these rows is going to add up to 6,800. That's how you know that this is right. Okay? So, uh, what does this mean? They both combine. 3,400 plus 3,400, that equals 6,800. So when they take a DNA test, your mother takes a DNA test, your dad takes a DNA test, you'll match them at 3,400 centimorgans, you'll match them at 3,400 centimorgans, you add that up, and that's you. Because they combined, each one of them gave you half. So, let's look at this in a math format. Okay, we have 3,400, 3,400 equals 6,800. Mom and dad equals you. I know that sounds simple, but this, cut, this is the same here for your mom, for her parents, for your grandmother over here, for your you know, grandfather over here, and all the way around. And all the way back up into your tree, as far back as you go, 
this is the same, but it divides by two. So let's move them over to the right, make some room here. Now, take your mother's. Your mother, since she's 3,400 to you, she gets half from her mother and half from her father. So 1,700 and 1,700 equal 3,400. And the same thing happens over here on your dad's side. So we'll put moms down there. We put those in pink. 1,700, 1,700 equal mom. 1,700, 1,700, guess what? They're going to equal your dad. So we're going to put that down here. 1,700 and 1,700 from her mother's parents equal her. The dad's parents, 1,700, 1,700 equal dad. And so dad is 3,400, mom is 3,400 right here, and that equals you. And notice that each one of the lines adds up to the same thing. So again, mom's parents, dad's parents, your parents. Okay, so this is how it looks. This is the inheritance. 17, 17, 17, 17 equals 6,800. 34, 34 equals 6,800. The reason is, is while you're unique, you are these people. These two people are you, but these two people came from these four people. These four people are you. All your genetics are right here. And so as we go on up, the same thing occurs further up. So your grandmother on your mom's side right here is the combination of her two parents. 850 and 850, well, that equals 1700. And that's true with every one of them. And then those 1700s equal the 3400s, 3400 equals you at 6800. And again, every one of these lines, you add up all those 850s, 6800. Add up all the 1700s, 6800. So 6800 is the individual, but you, you're, who you are today, back here 100 years ago, or let's see, 20, 40, 60 years ago, 60 years before you were born, your genetics were right here amongst these eight people. And later, as these two fell in love and married, and then they fell in love and married, or you know whatever else happened, the genetics were passed down to become you. And that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. There it is. And then of course you know you take this parent and you divide those two out, and guess what? It divides by two. So half of eight fifty is four twenty five and four twenty five, and it goes on back as far back as you want to go. Now, the autosomal DNA test that we take only goes back to a certain distance, and then it becomes a little iffy. And we all know, you know, we've heard the stories that recently Ancestry has just stopped doing the six centimorgans and is only doing to eight centimorgans. Well, let's explain that for a little bit. You have six centimorgans, and with that, because of the genetics being passed and shared all around, there's a certain number of false positives that show up in that. So I'm going to use a round number and just say 40% are false positives. 60% is uh, accurate. So when you click on that and it shows shared DNA matches and you don't see any, and you go researching that, well, between eight centimorgans and six centimorgans, there's probably 50,000 matches that got removed from your match list. But if let's put this realistically. I know a lot of people are upset about them being removed and... You know, I think that it should be like an option to get extended. You should have to ask to be extended. Maybe you should be able to allow to get your extendeds once a month or once a week or whatever. Because it is extreme on the processing power. Think, you've got 20 million people in the database and 20 million people each getting an additional 50,000 matches. Think of that, those number of matches that they were pulled up once a day by every person or multiple times in the case of those that are doing some hardcore research. That is an extreme taxation on the computer systems. Okay, So with that being said, I understand why they've cut back. And in some ways, it's probably better for us because the eights are going to be more solid. Most other companies went to seven. Okay, Some went to eight, only went to eight, but seven or eight. Ancestry chose to go to six. So they were actually giving us more for a long time. Now they took it back. That is kind of like giving your kid a toy and then taking it back and they've done nothing wrong. So in that instance, I understand that, you know, I probably shouldn't have done that. But that decision was made, you know, early on to go to six because it gave them an advantage, you know, marketing wise and whatnot. Once they got so big, it wasn't so much of an advantage. And rather than figure out how to solve that, they pulled it back. It is what it is. But if you had, you know, again, 50,000, if 40% of those are false, well, 40% of 50,000? You're looking at 20,000 false matches. Now think about that. If you just spent one minute, <laughs> just one minute, 
clicking on the shared matches and looking at that shared match just to see what they had and then coming back. That'd be 20,000 minutes in the wrong direction. 20,000 minutes. Okay. That's what, 300 and something hours? Or just doing rough numbers off the top of my head. But, you know, think about the false rabbit trail. That's just by clicking on them. That's not even researching and trying to find shared matches and trying to figure out how they match and putting them in the tree. None of that. That's just looking at them. Okay, that's more hours than most people, most, not all, would spend in a reasonable amount of their subscription time. <laughs> so, you know, putting in perspective, cutting out those false positives will actually shortcut it because we're still getting the eights. And we still have eights that don't show up with shared matches. So we still have that same conundrum of figuring out how they match and they're a little closer. So, and most people, when they match, like I have a test, my daughter has a test, my mother has a test. There's two or three generations that have tested. If you cut out the six, then, you know, that's the one that's furthest. Well, if there's a six, there's probably a 12 out there or a 10 or a 13 that's in that same family that you can still connect to. So I wouldn't worry so much about the six to eight. I know a lot of people have had a lot of heartburn on it. Um, I, there's other things Ancestry's done that I do have heartburn about. That's not one of them. <laughs> you know, that's 50,000 I don't have to sort through, but I do miss them because I have been able to use some of the sixes in order to connect and find some people. In fact, um, there are some people that, you know, I connected six Cinemorgans that now they don't show as a connection to me. I actually have some people in the town that I live in, you know, it's like, hey, you know, we, we show up as uh, six or seven Cinemorgans and now they're up at eight. And so now we don't show. And that's, I, I think that was kind of lost. Like I said, we had the toy and then Ancestors said, nah, you can't have that toy anymore. <laughs> so I get it. It's probably not the right way to go about it. I wish they would give us like once a month access because it is taxing their computers. They did have to probably cut back. But, you know, once a month, you know, let us opt in and say, hey, a special once a month viewing, you know, once a month, it resets and lets us see everything. You know, go down to five, be really bold, give us something extra. But again, once you get down that far, it's hard to use that usefully, but there are some clues in there. And not everybody's going to want to go and sort through 50,000 people at since six Cinemorgans or seven Cinemorgans when there's plenty there to be had at eight. Okay. But for some people, that may be the only clue they get. And I've helped some people that only had four or five on one side of the family tree that was above that, especially when you're dealing with you know, people outside the United States. So in their cases, cutting off from six to eight, that was a huge you know, toy regrab. I mean, that was big. So I don't think it was thought through a lot. But one thing Ancestry has shown me, uh, they, do, they, they talk through it, they decide, they move forward. I haven't seen them admit mistakes even when through lines was backwards. I haven't seen them admit, you know, that, that things were wrong. Uh, they just kind of move forward and hope you miss it. And uh, I think that's the way this one's going to happen. So anyway, that is what it is. But this is how you get to the six as you kind of go up this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this tree and I'm minimizing it. I'm going to put it in the bottom left-hand corner. It's going to shrink down where it's really hard to see. And I'll, I'll show you. See, it's down here. It's kind of hard to see, but it's the same one. I'm going to take the numbers away, and I'm going to shrink it and put it in the left-hand corner. Still leave you and mom and dad, so it's kind of you know where you can see it. And then I'm going to take this same tree formation. I'm going to assign it here to the great-grandfather right here. So there's dad, grandfather, great-grandfather. I'm going to take this same tree structure, and I'm going to intersect right here. So you're going to get a tree right here. So here it comes, and there it is. So this is the person. Put it on their grandfather. These two people are his parents, and so you got the same tree like we had down here. All right, now I'm going to do it again right here. All right, so now what you have is you have like almost a Y DNA path that wasn't intended to be on the male side, it just was to the right. And so, you know, it comes up here. And so, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, like, I highlighted this person, highlighted that person. I'm going to make this same ball shape node on each one of these as we go up. All right, so here we go. So there's on me, dad, granddad. I've already got great granddad. And we're going to go all the way up like that. So there we go. 
So we've got me, and then we've got the nine generations above that in the balls. We're actually going to add a tenth. It's not on here, but it, again, it's just their dad. All right. Now, I'm going to number here for you. This is the other mistake I made in the video. I'll go one, two, three, and guess what I do here? Four, because I counted here. I went one, two, three, four, and then counted five. That's what I did. But again, I would have to correct every subsequent slide. So please forgive me <laughs> for leaving that gap in there. It's going to go eight, nine, ten. There's ten balls counting this one, uh, but there's not a four here that was counting that one. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take away the numbers, change away the colors. And I'm going to make them kind of a 3D ball. But that's still the same thing. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going up in that angle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten it. I'm going to make it horizontal. And I'm going to put the numbers under it. Okay? So hopefully what we've done is we've taken that same tree where we went 340, 1700, 850, and then we did 425, 212. This is the same thing, but instead of being you know horizontal, before it was diagonal because the tree shapes were diagonal. Okay? What I've done is I've laid it out flat. So here's you at 6800. We had the whole thing about your 6800. And then here we are with parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and on back. Okay, so hopefully I haven't lost you because this that little confusing cluster right there, that's the biggest drop. So if you need to, you know, go back a couple of minutes in the video and, and do it. So basically all we've done was we've taken the tree that we had to begin with, the little V-shaped tree, moved it in the corner. We added two more trees to the, connect to it until we've got this lineage. And then we took it from diagonal to horizontal. All right. So parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and on back through the generations as you go like that. Every time you go generation back, you get that. So when you have a six Cinemorgan match, which you can tell how long ago I made this, actually, I made these slides about six months ago. <laughs> so again, I'm not a graphics person. Ancestry was still doing six. So that's why it says six here. I'm not changing it to eight because then, you know, I got to change everything. We're just going to run with this. It's the same whether it be six or eight. But we have right here, what the whole thing is you're trying to find where you connect to that person. And that is called the MRCA, Most Recent Common Ancestor. Notice there's not an S there. Okay? I think that is uh, because a lot of times the couple is married, then that kind of throws off the understanding of the numbers a little bit. So it's real important. It's ancestor, not sirs. You know, not ancestors. It's ter. You know, not plural. It's singular. Now, there is most recent common ancestors if they're both the same. And that's going to be talked about uh, later. But for right now, we're looking for that common ancestor. And in this case, if they're married, it could be either the male or the female. But we're looking for that intersection. So in here, this is the furthest it is. I mean, ancestor, as we talked about, it only goes out to six. So that's 34, 17, 850, 425, 212, you know, 56, uh, or excuse me, uh, 112, 56, 23, and then 12, and then 6, okay, as you divide back. But what's important is I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps, and they go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps to give us the most, most recent common ancestor. Now, there can be a generational difference one way or the other, and this can slightly be more this way. They could have gone up 6 and me 4, or me, you know, six and then four. So, but we're trying to find out where that is. So I'm going to show you something that's really cool. We're going to take the example of 380 Cinemorgans. Now I could have picked any one of them, but I just picked 380 because, well, I had to pick something to give you an example with. So at 380 Cinemorgans, we don't know if that's a 425 and it's just weaker in the DNA, or is that supposed to be at the 212 level and it's just stronger? It could be either one. But for the purposes of what we're going to do and how we're going to look at this, it doesn't really matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at patterns. Okay? We're going to look at patterns. And again, uh, this is the 6800. This is you. And then we got one, two, three, four, or five generations or distances away. Gener generational distances. So... The 212, that's underneath the green here, and 6800 would be underneath this one. It doesn't have a label. It's not this way. So it's 34, 17, 850, 425, 212. Now, that'd be you, parent, grandparent, great-grandparent, 
two X great grandparent, three X great grandparent, not four X because I went and counted all of these. I made a mistake. Ignore that. Okay, so 212. All right. And the most important thing is the patterns. <laughs> Again, folks, I, every time I do this, I find something and I correct it and I find something and correct it. It's just me. And so we're, we're going to get this information out here for you to use. So the important thing is first, from you, 6800 right here, you can go up one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to call it zero down, five up. Or I can go one, two, three, four up, one down. I can go one, two, three up and two down. I can go two up and three down. I can go one up and four down. Or I can go five down. Those are all the possible combinations for this 380. Because remember, it could be in between here or here. We don't know which one. What we get is this group of patterns. And this is where logic comes in. And we can quickly figure out how this person's related to us. After a while, you're going to see that number and you're immediately going to know which level they're going to be your MRCA. You're going to know who your MRCA is. And if you've done memorization of your family tree, like almost every genealogist has, it's going to come to the point where you see the DNA match number and you're going to know exactly which ancestor group it is. And then if you have clustering, oh, it's, it's, it's easy peasy. All right. You're, it's going to be right there on top of it. Well, Larry, look at all these possibilities. Well, yes, but let's look at them with some logic. All right. Remember, each one of these represents a generational distance. If it goes straight up, then if this is you right here, that's 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, 80 years, 100 years. All right. If you're watching my YouTube video and there's somebody 100 years older than you that's got a DNA connection to you and they've spit in the tube for ancestry, please write it in the comments below. <laughs> because <laughs> it just didn't happen. The average age of the viewership in this channel is 60 years old. Uh, most are 55 and up. Uh, very few, percentage-wise, are under 55. Uh, I guess you know, youth isn't uh, important to them to establish that uh, connection to their ancestors. But there's just not going to be somebody that's five generations up over you. Additionally, if you're 55 years old, guess what? You're not going to be 100 years older than somebody that's taking a test because you're only 55 years old. I know even with the, you know, the sibling differences and things like that, it's just not going to be the case. You're not 100 years old, older than somebody else that did this and not be connected to their parents or something else that took the test well. Because you know, to get that extreme case, you had to have a baby be swabbed almost at the time of its birth and if the parents did that, their DNA is already tested too. So you're going to be connecting to the parents. They're not there. So what we can do is logically we can remove somebody being 100 years older than you. And we can also remove somebody being 100 years younger than you having taken the, the DNA test. All right. So now let's look at the next one. We got 20, 40, 60. And then, you know, you go 80, but you come back down one. So now it's back down to 60. So 20, 40, 60, 60 years older than you. And then here, you come straight over, and it'd be 20, 40, 60 years younger than you. This is possible, okay? It, it's possible. But when I say it's possible, again, we're talking about that extreme uh, chance for you know the baby to be swabbed. If that's happened, the parent has taken the test too. So there is another closer test with that same person that's in your DNA match list in order for there to be somebody the 60 difference. So while this is technically possible on each end, it's not likely. So why there's a green question mark in there where, you know, I am going to acknowledge there is a less than 1% chance out of 20 million DNA tests that ancestry is done, less than 1% will meet these criteria. And in those criteria, without a parent or somebody else doing it is probably 1% of that 1%. So you're talking 0 0.0001 likelihood that this pertains to you. Zero on these, 0 0.0001 that these pertain to you. So what are we left with? We're left with either going up one, two, three, and down two, or up two and down three. That's it. 380 centimorgans. What does that mean? Well, you got parent, grandparent, great-grandparent, 
or parent, grandparent. So we either got grandparent or great grandparent. We know the person that matches us at 380 centimorgans is going to match us at either our grandparent or great grandparent. They're not going to match us at the third grade or fourth grade or through cousin Bob's second aunt, uncle, cousin thrice removed or something like that. No, it's not. They're going to match you in this pattern. Okay? And that's true regardless of the centimorgans. Now, the closer you are, the less likely you're going to make a mistake. So let's say that it was 425. Well, 425 is going to be up to down two. Because if you go up one and down three, there's going to be a huge generational. There's 40 years difference. Now, that should show up when you look at their profile picture on the public profiles. I know some people get all antsy when we talk about the private and publicness of those pictures and the profiles. But it is called, you know, it says enable public profile picture. When you look at that right under, it'll tell you the age, if they've opted to show it, of that person. Or if you have a picture, you can estimate. So if you're 60 years older than that person and the person in the picture looks like they're 80 years old, you're probably not 60 years older than them. They're just going to say it, <laughs> you know, can't judge a book by its cover. But, you know, if they look like they're not in their teens and you're 60 years older than them, um, unless you're 100 years old, in which kudos, you know, for you for watching my video, thumbs up and, uh, you know, probably leave a note down there. I yeah, appreciate you. Uh, I want to thank you in person. But <clears throat> no, it's not going to be that. So when you get that, you're going to be up to. Or you're going to have a half sibling situation now, uh, or a, <clears throat> a half kinship situation. I meant half kinships. Well, that's for another video, but we're going to talk about that. But it's important when we do the MRCAs, when you go up like this, this is direct line through one common ancestor. If you have two common ancestors, it actually goes back up one, one level. Okay. So let's say that we went up two and down three, but we know that this person has both parents the same. Okay, this, this intersecting is the same for them as for us. They have both these people in their tree, both of those people in my tree. Well, then you can treat it, and they're probably a full kinship is going to be up here at 425 uh, rather than down here at the 212. Okay, that's probably a little confusing, but I got another video going to come out on that, and we call it the plus one video. Um, maybe we'll give it a, a, some methodologies, but this one, I would just call it the, the ball and pattern method. You know, pattern and ball, ball and pattern, whatever. Uh, I think it's much easier to understand things. So just to kind of go through it again real quickly, you know, you start with you, you got your mom and your dad, you got their parents, all right, all the way up. And then when you've got your 6,800 combination, every row is 6,800, okay, adds up to you. The mom is the 1,700s combined to them. Dad is too, okay, adds up. Mom and dad equals you. Mom is combined of hers, all right. Made it up like this. And then, of course, the ones below, 850 for each one of those. Those 850s go to the 17s. The 17s go to the 34s. 34s go to the 68s. I know I'm talking fast, but you've already seen this once. This is just a fast recap for those that like to get it real quick. All right, so took that. We shrank it. We took the same tree, and we made it again, exactly again right up here, identical, intersected there. Did it again, intersected there. So you see this tree and this tree and this tree basically showing the lineage right there. We highlighted the dots to show the generations and we numbered them in error. <laughs> Sorry about that. We made the dots without the numbers and made them horizontal and then put the numbers back underneath the dots. Okay. So once you get to this point, once you get to the, you know, the ball and pattern method, it doesn't matter where you're looking. If you're looking at 106, you do the same thing. Okay. And anywhere, you know, the, the numbers are, well, now it's not six, but this would still be eight because you got 13 and then eight on the division. And that's why ancestor probably went to six, because when you divide by two, you know, each time you go out a node, you divide by two, 106, 53, 26, 13, the next common division is six. You either go with 13 or you go with six. So, you know, when you divide by two, that made sense, you know, DNA and genealogically. Uh, 13 to 8 didn't make as much sense. Other companies did it. Ancestry said, you know what, we're going to go ahead and do the 6. Now they're at the 8, but that's still lower than the 13. So that's still, if you get an 8, that's still right here. All right. So you're looking for the MRCA by going up and down. You pick the number. You count the number of balls. You find the number that you have, put it between the two in the balls. And then you start looking at the patterns. Here, all up. Okay. Uh, up and down one, up and down two, up and down three, up and down four, 
and then there's not up any, it's just down five. Once we got the patterns, we list the patterns and we eliminated like the Sherlock Holmes method. You eliminate what it can't be and whatever you're left with, no matter how bizarre it is, that's what you have. We eliminated the fact that, you know, nope, there's not anybody, you know, 100 years older than us or younger than us that have spit in the tube. <laughs> and then the likelihood of somebody being 60 years older than us or 60 years younger than us, because this is a pretty new evolving field, it can happen. And it is, it, I'm sure that there's going to be some of you in the 0 0.001 because there's 20 million people have taken the test with Ancestry and even more taking it with these others. So, you know, while 0 0.001 doesn't mean a lot, when you move the decimal over, you know, uh, three spots or four spots over there uh, on 20 million, then you're still looking at, you know, what, 2 million, uh, 200,000, 20,000, you know. So it, it does pertain to 20,000 out of the 20 million people that did it. But I think it's safe to say don't start there. <laughs> That would be the last place I would look, but it's technically possible. So if you can't find it here and you've spent exhausted all resources there, you could look up one more uh, or down one more. Again, look at the profile picture. If you know if they don't look like they're a newborn or a teenager, then this is eliminated. Or if they, you know you're not a newborn, or if you're a newborn, watch my video. Please leave the comments down there. I want to hear from you too, because wow, I, I want to know you. <laughs> you're smart. So what you're left with is these two patterns, and that's it. Up two, down three, or up three, down two. And your kinships, your connection, that MRCA will fall there. All right? Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, this was interesting. You can pass this around to your friends. i got some others that aren't going to be uh, as informative as this one, so you probably won't want to pass them around. But uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to talk uh, about plus one. And so this is kind of the ball and patterns. And, uh, you know, the patterns, after you do this a while, honestly, folks, it's just like playing the game of chess. You have a knight, and the knight's moves in chess, for those of you who don't know chess, uh, it has a distinct pattern move, and that is up one and over two, or up two and over one. And that's it. So this is actually like a, the knight in chess. You know, you're up three, down two, up two, down three. And once you get to doing this and use these balls. And I actually made some strings and put you know wooden balls on them and tried to example it. I've tried to demonstrate this in a million different ways. And you can see the error still in this video. And uh, I figured just talk through them and get this information out to you so that you can kind of do this. But I've got some really cool ones and a, an entirely co new concept I call plus one that combined with this make it extremely understandable. So I'm going to follow this video with the plus one video just as quickly as I can for you. And then we've got like a shortcut and it's going to allow you to figure it out easy just by, well, as simple as the back of your hand. And I'll just leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell notifications. If not, Santa won't come to your house this year. No, I'm just kidding. Um, if you see the uh, QR code up at the top right, changing the way we're doing things here, I'm not going to be asking for any new Patreon support because every video touches people different ways. Some videos will help you a lot. Some videos you won't even like. That's just the way the videos work. So rather than you doing the ask in the ongoing way, if a video uh, helps you, if it helps you solve a problem, uh, consider clicking, uh, you know, using your phone. You just bring up photos. If you have an iPhone, hold it over the QR code. Uh, and it will go to the website and allow you to make a small donation, uh, PayPal donation. Uh, I drink Dr. Pepper, so buy me a coffee or, or Dr. Pepper to give me the caffeine to keep going on these videos. If something really helped you and it made a family breakthrough, consider uh, taking me out for dinner and uh, saying thank you that way virtually. Just click on that and, and uh, do that. There's not a predetermined amount. It doesn't have tiers. It doesn't have a $1, $5, $10, 2500 anything built in there. It's just whatever you feel like. You know, you, you've, you think this touched you for a dollar or $10 or $100 or whatever you feel like. Uh, some... Some things have helped me immensely. Some I've watched, and you know, don't feel bad if you if this one doesn't touch you to do that. You know, like it, it doesn't help you make the breakthrough. You know, hey, that this video is not for you. And so, if something happens, like in the clustering, because I know the clustering helped a lot of people. <laughs> uh, you know, consider doing that and uh, you know, saying thank you. And if everybody that watched that video said uh, thank you to the tune of one dollar. 
um, I could do this full time and actually maybe hire somebody to do it because that thing, I think the thing is at 40,000 views, 50,000 views now, something like that. But anyway, uh, so that's what the QR code is. If you're wondering, all the videos will have that now. And uh, you saw it here first, uh, breaking ground as we always do. Uh, it won't be long. You'll see that on a lot of people's videos. <laughs> so uh, just remember, when everybody's doing it, you saw it here first. We were the first on YouTube to do that. And, uh, you know, consider using it if you enjoy what you hear. All right. Well, we'll talk to you very, very soon. Promise you it's not going to be two months before the next one.